today is Monday, April the 6th. I'm Ron Merson uh, here with Good Morning Santa Paula brought to you by KADY TV. And with me today is Peggy Kelly uh, with the Mighty Santa Paula Times to give us our update. Hello, Peggy, what's going on? Yeah, good morning, Ron, good morning. Um, well, you know, we're still keeping tabs on the COVID-19 coronavirus. And uh, as of Sunday afternoon, when they released the latest statistics for April 5th, we had 221 total cases, which was an increase of, uh, let me see, I've got a bunch of charts here, 18 new cases. That's that's not bad, you know. I mean, I think the social distancing is starting to really make a difference. We still are at three cases in Santa Paula, and uh, so we haven't had we uh, our increases are very slow. Some areas are. Once again, we're more isolated. Uh, there's not a lot of us that came back from Italy. Uh, it's just it's, it's demographic, and uh, Fillmore still has no cases. So it just goes to show you in the larger cities, of course, have more cases. And the ones, especially in the East County, seem to, uh, and I don't know if that's because they border the, the, the LA County line. And I know they have a lot of people that commute to Los Angeles to work from that area. I, I don't really know. But anyway, so they're, they're the ones with the, with the largest surge. They actually have more cases than Oxnard, which is the um, county's largest, largest uh, city. And Oxnard, let's see, yeah, Oxnard has 40 cases and Simi Valley has 46. So that gives you an idea. So basically it. Also, uh, we're still, I, I kind of noticed an interesting trend where 75%, approximately 75% of the people that are uh, have, have caught COVID-19 are baby boomers and Gen Xers. They have a much, much lower rate of people that are over 65 that catch it, but the, at least in Ventura County. But the issue is, is that they're more prone to have more serious cases. And we've had six, um, six deaths in the county, very sad from Corona, and they've all been in their 70s and 80s and had underlying health issues. But it's not just old people that catch it. It's, it's everybody can catch it and they can spread it. And that's why it's so important, the social distancing, the washing your hands, wearing the mask now, wear a scarf, wear a bandana whenever you go out and only go out for essentials. That's it. Just go to essentials and please don't, don't mingle. Try to, try to keep all your, your groups and stay six feet away. You know, that's, yeah. that's basically it. You know, like the most interesting man in the world, you know, it sounds like something he'd say, you know, stay distant, my friends. You know, mm -hmm. so I mean, that's that's what we have to do right now. Now, I know that there's been a lot of trouble keeping kids entertained and things like that. And I know, Ron, that, that you and the Optimist Club recently did something with the city. I'm, I'm real happy to hear about it. So tell the audience. Yes. Um, yesterday, we or Saturday did a video with the Park and Rec Department. The, some of you folks may remember on the Earth Day or the Easter event that the city had every year. Uh, they had the Easter egg hunt, but they also had crafts booths and the Optimist Club always did our planting the seeds in a decorated pot. They could water it and they did have flowers for Mother's Day. Well, because the Earth Day event was canceled, the city decided to go ahead and give out crafts kits for the kids. They actually oh, have 1,200 kits sitting down at the rec department. I saw them Saturday. They're divided, you know, by age groups, K, one, two, three, all the way through eighth grade. And there's all kinds of things. There's even little plastic Easter eggs in them with uh, candy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they, have the, they have the supplies. So I saw them throwing those those Easter eggs in the bags. There's 1,200 bags out on tables oh, in, the commu in, in the big uh, auditorium room there. And then they have composition notebooks for the older kids. And they have coloring papers. And they have craft projects and I see all kinds of little things. They even have some stuff where they took cornstarch and put color, you can put uh, coloring in it and put water and you can squirt on the sidewalk or driveway with liquid chalk, you know, and oh, I saw on their back patio, they have all their names oh, written, all the staff and oh, hearts oh, and all. Ron, you're entirely too excited about this. I bet, <laughs> I bet you're gonna do that at home and make Cam crazy. <laughs> yeah, so so we I did a video with them on how to assemble that pot. 
and uh, they know the potted plants and it's a you can go there they have it on their website or their uh, facebook and so on all the different sources but also the optimist club along with the chamber of commerce put together a contest afterwards that after the kids if they want to keep a notebook or a journal or a diary they can submit uh -huh. it by august 1st and we're going to be giving out awards for we're going to judge them and give out awards um later on in uh september you know, oh, that's August, september. Give them so that's to look forward to. yeah so the community center park and rec department is working very hard to come up with some projects for the kids oh. i was down there they're working like crazy down there you know long days so yeah uh, absolutely and i know they're supposed to be giving them out today which is Monday. Yes. so yes. hopefully everybody will you know come by i think they're limiting it to two bags per household if i'm not mistaken correct, correct. And they have oh, it on right, Facebook. Wonderful. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people come by, and they're doing it in the morning and the afternoon, I believe. So, okay, well, that's wonderful. Well, if and I'm sure if they have any left over, which I don't anticipate they will, they'll let us know when, <laughs> when they're going to do yeah. it. Yeah, you know, that would be wonderful. You know, um, just just on a more serious note, I wanted to um, discuss this. You'll have to excuse me. I am in the offices of the Santa Paula Times, and. Um, but anyway, um, got to get that newspaper out, you know. But um, anyway, I know that there's a lot of controversy right now as far as the drug using the so-called lupus drug, the um, hydro, I think it's called, let me look, I've got something here. It's hydro, I can't pronounce it anyway, hydro, hydroxychloroquine. And I'm only going to say it once. And they are uh, going ahead and they're trying to, you know, and I understand that they're trying to find something that'll prevent people from doing this. But I'm, I'm curious because, you know, it's also used, that drug is used to treat people with lupus. So I'm, I'm a little worried because I hope that doesn't create any shortages of people, well, people trying to avoid COVID-19. And I don't, I don't blame anyone for, for trying to avoid getting COVID-19. But we do have over a million and a half people in the United States, mostly women, because uh, lupus is a, is a woman's disease. And it's life-threatening for them not to have their medication. They don't, right. they don't take that lightly or anything like that. And I was wondering, maybe we could get Dr. Fauci on, on one day and ask him. <laughs> <laughs> and Go ask for it. Him, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and ask him. Basically, I wonder, I know they're testing and I and I approve that and appreciate that. Not that I have to approve anything, but I appreciate that. But I wonder if they have tried to do any sort of a survey of people with lupus who do take the drug to see if any of them have had COVID-19. Now, it's a very small portion of the population that has it. But still, that would be a way to even if they've been exposed to it, that would that would be a way to even start to get a grip on it before they go through any lengthy testing. But that's just me. But, you know, no, you know, the, no. the next time the president has his press conference and Fauci's there, you can call in as a uh, member will. of the press and uh, get your question. In. <laughs> yeah, I will. I will. The mighty I'll tell him it's the mighty Santa Paula Times and he'll probably shove everybody out of the way and say, wait a minute, I got to take this call. <laughs> yeah, anyway. uh, yeah, but anyway, so Good I question, know people though. are willing to try a lot of different things. And the one thing now that is proven, it's not a medicine, it's a thought process. It's washing your hands, wearing a scarf or a bandana or a mask when you go out, not going out unless you absolutely have to and staying six feet away from people. And uh, don't belong, uh, don't go out in groups or don't mingle with groups of more than 10 people and still maintain social distancing. Right. You know, so. and I mean, and I, you know, like somebody said to me, I don't even know 10 people I like. So, you know, so some people are have a better, a better <laughs> advantage. <laughs> yeah, they have that advantage, you know. So, but, you know, as long as I, I, I know that our numbers aren't crazy, every case is troublesome, every case potentially has has very serious consequences. 80% um, of those that get coronavirus have very little or no symptoms. And that's the good news. The bad news is that those are the people that think they're all right and very possibly could be pregnant. So, yeah. so let's all yeah. work together, okay? Okay, well, 
thanks for the update. And just we'd like to remind everybody to help us out. We need our thousand subscribers on our uh, KADYTV.net. Go there and you'll see. And there's the Santa Paula community channel there. You just look and it'll tell you everything. All the past um, videos have been archived if you want to go back and look at those again. But please hit the subscribe button. It helps us so we can get to the point where we can live stream these uh, these conference calls. Um, that's what we have for you. So thanks for listening and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank Bye. Bye-bye.